Okay, Raman. Namaste. Welcome to this webinar with the theme Learn and Earn from Natural Farming Videos. Access Agriculture is proud to organise this event with our official co-hosts, the National Coalition for Natural Farming and with MANAGE, the National Institute of Agricultural Extension Management. We have wonderful relationships with partners throughout Asia, Africa and Latin America, and it's a pleasure to see that many have registered here to attend our formal launch in India. We will hear today from a number of organizations who have committed to natural farming and are increasing opportunities for farmers to learn from other farmers. The focus of this event is on expanding opportunities for farmers, women and youth. And we will share how this is progressing in India. So in the time we have together, we will explore ways in which you can use our experience and resources to scale natural and organic farming across India and beyond. We will also hear from some of our Indian partners about how they have used Access Agriculture videos. And we will collect perspectives on how we can jointly move forward with organizations and communities that are active in natural and organic farming. This year, we are happily celebrating 10 years of Access Agriculture. We aim to increase our activities across India, and your active involvement in this webinar will certainly help show the way forward. So I wish you all an inspiring event, and I hand across now to our moderator. Thank you so much, Josephine. Uh, namaste, Johar, Namaskaram, Sastriyakal to everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ria. Uh, I'm from the National Coalition for Natural Farming and today I will be your moderator for the session. Uh, before we start off, there are a few housekeeping rules that I would like to let you all know about. First one, uh, today's session is being recorded, so it will be available for viewing after the workshop as well. We shall share the link with all of you subsequently. Second, uh, there are a lot of participants uh, joining the session. So hence we have muted all the microphones. Uh, and third, in, we encourage everyone to ask questions, share their thoughts, in, and we would like you all to do so in the chat box or in the Q&A. The team will try their level best to take up those questions during the Q&A session and share it for the interaction. In addition to this, uh, we request everyone to mention their name and their organization in, in rename themselves as their name and their organization so that it's easy to, for us to recognize as well. Uh, last, uh, we got, after all the main presentations today, we are going to have an open forum where uh, we, everyone will get an opportunity to ask questions and discuss and also share their points. So we encourage you all to participate in that session as well. Uh, we hope, we sincerely hope that you all enjoy the event and find this to be a very fruitful experience. Uh, now, to moving forward, uh, to begin the session, I would like to invite Dr. Paul Van Mele, uh, Director of International Development for uh, Access Agriculture, to give us a brief introduction. Thanks a lot, Ria. Um, Without further ado, and as we have a lot to cover, let me start with my presentation about Access Agriculture, its vision, model, and reach. In my talk today, I will touch upon a shift towards natural and organic farming, Access Agriculture's vision, its model, our global outreach and impact, and the activities in India. Now, very interestingly, just two months ago, the Center for Science and Environment in India published a very encouraging report that looked at evidence over a 15-year period. And some of the results 
came out very strongly that organic and natural farming it outperforms chemical-based farming. And some of the recommendations that the report made was that farmers need more support during, especially during the transition. Also that we need to leverage ICT technology to support last mile delivery and to support farmer training. And that in these efforts, we also need to integrate community-based practitioners. So what are some of the generic challenges to scale agroecology? As we know, natural farming, organic farming is knowledge intensive, but ecological knowledge is complex and hard to share. It's more difficult than giving a recommendation on a chemical fertilizer, for instance. Another challenge to scale natural farming is that if we use just face-to-face -face extension, there's only a limited number of people we can reach. And youth and women in particular have limited access to knowledge. So this brings us to our vision of improved rural livelihoods and sustainable food systems in the global south. And how do we go about achieving our vision? Is by promoting agroecological principles and rural entrepreneurship through capacity development and South-South exchange of quality farmer-to-farmer -farmer training videos in local languages. Now, you may wonder, why do we focus on quality videos, not just any video? It's because effective training videos, they actually combine scientific with local knowledge. They also allow the videos to be translated into any local language so that it can support South-South sharing. If they're good quality, it also allows people to learn without outside facilitation because we know that the number of extension officers uh, is just inadequate. And also important since our aim is to change and make a transformation of sustainable food systems, it is important to also bring in and reach uh, the consumers. So through media houses and digital service providers, we can actually reach a much larger number of videos uh, of, of people. So how has Access Agriculture been able to build a rich world leading library of quality farmer training videos? Well, for the past 10 years, we have trained and backstopped local organizations across Africa and South Asia to produce quality videos according to our well-tested model. In the bottom right corner, you also see and another activity that we've been really active with is depending on demand, we also train local extension and communication professionals to translate videos and scripts and to record the voiceovers in the local languages. And this is really important. I think by now we have more than 300 people across the South who we can draw upon. What we then do, once videos have been produced and translated into local languages, we have created an open access video platform to support South-South learning. And here people can freely watch and download quality training videos free of charge. The interface of the video platform is in multiple world languages, including Bengali and Hindi. Now videos of course are available in more languages and people can search the video platform through the categories but also searching directly by language and currently our platform hosts videos in 94 languages and a good number of videos has already been translated into Indian languages. Of course, we hope to do more in future. How does this work? If you find any video of interest, 
you click on it, you will see you can play it. But underneath, there's also the possibility to download either the video, an audio file, if you work for a radio station, or a fact sheet. Now, while the internet offers great opportunities for sharing knowledge, we know that in most rural areas, access to the internet is limited. So we have partnered with a private company that has developed so-called smart projectors. And the, smart, the solar powered smart projector is actually a powerful computer and the projector in one. It contains our entire video library. So anybody can show videos off grid without internet to remote communities. Now we know quality content is crucial to trigger learning, to trigger experimentation. We also know that ICT technology can help intensify and scale the learning process. But we are also very much aware about the importance of working with local organizations and entrepreneurs. So three years ago, we launched a challenge fund through which young people can submit a business plan online on how to generate revenues from screening and sharing videos with farms using the smart projector. By now, we support a network of close to 200 young professionals, uh, which we call entrepreneurs for rural access. We have them active, I think, in at least 12 African countries by now. And we are about to also roll out this model in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana in collaboration with RYSS and Wasan, among others. Now, do communities always have to wait for outside people to come and show videos? Well, we think it's not necessary. And to make this possible to allow farmers to watch videos at their own time, at their own pace, we have developed a mobile application that will be available very soon from the Google Play Store. And this will allow farmers to find videos more easily in their local language, to watch them anytime, and also to share them with their peers without the use of any data. Now, let us take a look at our reach. We conducted an online survey in 20. One uh, to which Dr. Mahesh Chander has contributed. He will present more results uh, later on during the webinar. So I'm just presenting general, some general figures. From the online survey, we know that more than 5,000 organizations, TV and community radio stations are making use of our video platform and our resources. And through them, we have actually been able to reach over 90 million people. This is quite impressive, considering that we are an organization of just 10 years old and with 25 staff. Looking at the past decade, here you can see the world map, you can see our video platform. We have attracted visitors from across the globe. And India leading. So nearly 1 million people have, have visited the platform. Looking at the impact, and because many people always ask, so what is the impact? And this is also something that was um, a, a result from the global survey. Impact has been really diverse, better yield, improved pest management, soil health, but also I think importantly, if we Think about the need to change mindset, not just of farmers, but extension officers, researchers, anybody working in the food system. A deeper appreciation of local knowledge is important. Involvement of youth, better food and nutrition, empowerment of women. One third even also mentioned that after watching excess agriculture videos, farmers diversified their farm. 
Now, the cost effectiveness and sustainability of our model, as well as the scale of our impact, were the main reasons why last October we received the International Innovation Award for Sustainable Food Systems from the Swiss government and the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. Now, this last part of my presentation, I will zoom in on India, uh, since we have most participants from India. And here you can see the variation between states in terms of uh, number of people having visited our online platform. Currently, we have, as I mentioned, we have trained video production partners, local organizations um, in various African countries, India Bang and Bangladesh. But for India, for the moment, our trained video partners, they're only in Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. Um, based on the local expertise and the needs, they actually continue to produce new videos with our backstopping. Obviously, this model we hope in future to expand so that we can also cover um, content from, from other states. Now, this slide, I think, is a really interesting one. It shows the most popular videos in India based on views and downloads. The ones that you see here with, with the star, those are actually videos that were produced in other countries, not in India. So this shows how farmers in India are also very keen to learn from fellow farms in other parts of the world. Now, in terms of topics, you can see um, there's topics that relate to plant health, to soil health, which is of course a very important uh, element. There's also videos on food processing, on how to market organic produce. But above all, there's many topics that relate to natural livestock farming. And I'm, I'm really happy that Dr. Nitya Gotke um, will talk about this, one of, one of our key partners who has been involved in this. And it's really exciting to see that those videos are also extremely popular across, across Africa. To just share one experience from the ground, I found it really intriguing that farmers who had stopped growing maize because they were not able to control the fall armyworm and invasive pests, they were not able to control it with pesticides and they stopped cultivating maize altogether. After they watched the view on how to control far, fall armyworms in a natural way, they decided to start cultivating maize again. Now, as transformative change of the food system requires a holistic approach, whereby as many stakeholders as possible are engaged, we have grown a network of partners, many of whom I'm happy to say are present at this workshop. Obviously, we aim to further expand the support base over the coming years. Here, I'm just gonna show you on the top, you see some of the international organizations uh, that, that focus on regenerative agriculture, organic agriculture, natural farming, state level organizations. We've already partnered with um, universities, civil society organizations, media, and even private companies working on organic agriculture. So on this last, this last slide, I want to show some ideas of how we would like to move forward in India. Obviously, we want to align our work with the government of India's policy, priorities on natural farming, as I mentioned, we want to expand our partnerships across India, find out from you all also what are the priority needs in terms of new video content to be developed. And if resources allow, we would very much like to build capacities in different parts of India to develop additional content. 
decide on what other Indian languages we need to translate videos in. Obviously, when the Access Agriculture mobile app is launched, we want to make it available in Indian languages. Equip local organizations active in organic and natural farming. Equip them with smart projectors. Support young women as entrepreneurs for rural access. And last but not least, as we want to reach out to society at large, we also want to strengthen community radio and TV stations. So thank you all very much. I'm sure if you have any comments, any questions, please do type them in the question and answer um, box and we will be happy to respond to them during the open forum. Ria, over to you. Thank you so much, Paul. Yes. So in addition to crops and aspects of soil health and basic agriculture, uh, Access Agriculture videos also promote good animal health practices, right? So to, to help us explain more about the work uh, that uh, the videos that are there on animal health care and herbal medicines for animal health care, uh, we, I invite Dr. Nitya Ghotke, who is the founder director of Antra, which works on sustainable livestock production systems. So uh, Dr. Nitya has actually supported Access Agriculture in producing some of these videos on herbal medicines and animal health care and animal health systems. So I invite uh, Dr. Nitya to share her thoughts. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ria. Thank you, Access Agriculture. Can you share the screen, please? Good afternoon, everybody. And, uh, Big warm uh, thank you to the Access Agriculture team for inviting me to be there this afternoon. Um, I also would like to congratulate Access Agriculture on completing 10 years, as well as congratulations for this new launch. Um, um, uh, so I'm, uh, there was a little sign which said I was to start my video, so I was a bit confused, but I guess you can handle it at the other end. So I'd like to, about myself a little bit, I'm Dr. Nitya Ghutke, some of you know me from several years ago. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a veterinarian. I'm one of the founder directors of Antra, an organization with working with livestock health care. So can I go to the next slide, please? Yeah. So a little bit about Antra, for those of you who don't know us, we were founded in 1992, an old organization by a team of women veterinarians to reach out, connect, and address the problems faced by livestock rearing communities. Our focus has been on smallholder farmers, pastoralists, adivasis, Dalits, women, and others who remain actually hidden from mainstream development. Over the years, we've realized that development has several dimensions, and it's best addressed if we work collectively with the community. We found that some of the best solutions blend modern science with people's traditional knowledge, some of you are familiar with the work that Anta has done in the past, trying to validate traditional knowledge systems. We work along with communities and we've built a strong base of evidence, which, uh, which we feel in time are enduring, sustainable, equitable, and also respectful of people's knowledge and wisdom. We don't believe only science is uh, the best solution, nor do we think that everything that the traditional knowledge has to offer is effective. We try to work towards a much more holistic system where we use the best from both. And today, Antra is a resource center that continues to offer support in the areas of livestock, biodiversity, and livelihood. Next slide, please. So some of you may be familiar with our publications, which are actually quite old now. This is uh, Ethno Veterinary Research in India, an annotated bibliography was uh, brought out in 2000. Uh, then we brought out Bank on Hooves in 2005. Those of you who've seen it would know that Bank on Hooves has chapters on using validated veterinary remedies for treating animals. We also have Bank on Hooves in um, Telugu, which is called Kottam Dagariki Vaitim, which sold over to, I mean, many, many copies we so we kept printing new, uh, uh, new editions. Additionally, in Marathi, we have them as small booklets, not as one big volume, but, you know, smaller booklets. And of course, this plants used in animal care was uh, a book which took several years of my life. It is brought out in 2008 and contains details on the plants we researched during our research on ethno-veterinary care. So this was the work we actually did till about 2008 and we 
he trains several communities and para professionals in the process on using uh, tradition. I mean, using ethno veterinary remedies as it was known. Next, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, but it wasn't. A, it wasn't smooth sailing. Definitely, there were several pro problems which we perceived along the way, and I'd like to highlight some of them. First of all, and this problem remains, and this is true for several countries uh, in the developing world, there just aren't enough veterinarians and their outreach is very poor in rural areas. This is true for Southern Af uh, Africa, it is true for Africa, it's true for Southern America, South America, large other parts of South Asia and Asia. Secondly, low literacy rates amongst livestock keepers, particularly communities like pastoralists. So they need different methods of communication. We need other ways in which to get them to be able to understand what we're trying to convey through our uh, books or uh, uh, pamphlets or posters, whatever we create. And as I said before, despite training thousands of animal health workers, uptake of ethno-veterinary practice we found was quite poor. Why were farmers not taking up and practicing rapid, you know, systems which we actually gathered from them. These were, uh, our books contain knowledge which we got from the community. So why were they reluctant to pick it up was one of the questions that we, we faced, say 2008 to 2010. And we also found an increase in the use of chemicals and antibiotics as medical shops and pharmaceutical companies penetrated the rural areas, especially in the last 20 years. As I told you, we are about, we are over 30 years old. We started in 1992. And then in those years, when we went into rural India, you didn't find many shops or chemical, uh, pharmaceutical shops or chemical shops in the villages we worked in. But re recently and over the years, they have proliferated and they, in fact, dispense medicines and uh, chemicals far more than the veterinarians and the veterinary system. And this is why farmers and uh, livestock owners have access to antibiotics, which are sold over the table in India, over the counter in India. Next, please. So some of our learnings as we grappled with some of these issues was, oh no, uh, I think, uh, uh, have we skipped some slides? Problems, yes. Uh, the next one. Next. Okay. Um, so partnering with Access Agriculture 2015 to 2022, the journey so far, we met the team at about the same time we were thinking of maybe making videos on livestock care, which is about 2015. And two of our staff members attended a workshop organized by Agriculture, Access Agriculture in Maharashtra. I think WOTR had hosted it and we met Paul and uh, uh, Ahmed. And uh, they came to our office, it was very nice. We also met Atul Pagar, who'd been trained by Access Agriculture. Paul in his previous uh, presentation spoke about why more videos are in Maharashtra. Atul has been the person who's trained by Access Agriculture, has been making several movies. And he's also here today. And he started uh, identifying scripts and writing, uh, uh, making the videos. We selected topics together and then we prioritized them. And then we helped write scripts for the videos that we wanted to make. And uh, these were done with the community. We looked at the problems we most frequently uh, um, you know, noticed in the community of people contacted us for, and then we tried working on that. Several videos were made in the following topics. We had such uh, livestock, bloat, fever, diarrhea, worms, and mastitis. This is for livestock, of course. And in the uh, videos that Paul has shown, you'll find that fever and uh, diarrhea have been uh, noted as some of the most uh, downloaded, they're the ones that have been downloaded a lot. We also in the pipeline, we have some on poultry care, making of ghee, value addition of milk to make ghee, sheep care and foot rot. Uh, we've also helped uh, review several scripts for technical content, such as the one on calcium deficiencies, some on deworming of sheep for other continents. And it's been a very exciting journey that we've had with Access Agriculture. Next, please. Yeah, so the responses have been, Livestock keepers play an active role in the video making process. So it is a participatory way to merge scientific with local knowledge. The videos themselves have become an integral part of our training programs. Training programs are often, you know, uh, we still continue to train a number of communities and uh, uh, I conduct training programs every now and then and so, do my, so does my team. So we use the videos, for example, to kickstart a training program. We use them to say, you know, make an introduction and usually it's a winner. 
people are happy to see videos and uh, they respond well to them, especially in rural areas where they may not have access to, I mean, some of the communities I work with, especially migratory pastoralists do not have television sets in their house. They barely have radios. They have, of course, now they have mobile apps. So I'm looking forward to the mobile app of Access Agriculture, but many of them uh, do not have, you know, something which is quite commonplace such as television. So they enjoy seeing the videos. They've been very well received amongst livestock owners. We reach out to over 40,000 livestock owners, including mobile pastoralists through our partner networks in Maharashtra and other states. And our farmers are able to replay the videos and make medicines as per their needs. So each video has details on how medicines are made with using locally available ingredients and using very simple methods. So we are able to use these and then replay the videos quite easily. And that's been a great um, help for us. And we're also now in the process of sharing the video with the Department of Animal Husbandry, the government of Maharashtra. We want to help them kickstart a program on natural livestock farming. Uh, because at least fortunately, I think now the, uh, uh, the problems related to chemical agriculture have become quite evident. People are, even the governments and policymakers are keen to work towards natural livestock farming systems. So I think the governments are responsive now much more than they were, say, 10 or 15 years back. And uh, I think this is the last slide. So what we will now be sharing with you is one of the movies that we've helped script and make. And uh, sit back, please enjoy the movie that you see, and we would love your feedback on this. Thank you. Many people spend lots of money on medicine to treat their animals. Antibiotics may cure some diseases, but antibiotics will not be effective if you use them too often. Antibiotics also end up in the meat and milk, which can be harmful for human health. There are different causes of diarrhea. In this video, we will see how to prevent animals from getting diarrhea caused by drinking contaminated water or by eating too much green fodder. We will also learn how to treat sick animals with herbal medicine. You know your animal has diarrhea when it defecates more often than normal and the feces are watery. The animal has a dry skin and stops chewing its cud. An animal with diarrhea has dull and sunken eyes and moves less or moves more slowly. So, let's listen to a livestock owner from Maharashtra in India about what causes diarrhea in animals. Diarrhea is more common in the rainy season when there is more green grass. As our animals graze unattended, they eat lots of green fodder and drink dirty water. So they get diarrhea. Herbal medicines are low cost, effective, safe and easy to use. You can prevent diarrhea by keeping your animal clean and by separating sick animals from healthy ones. I keep my animals and the shelter they stay in clean all the time. I remove any spilled food and dung often because the germs that cause diarrhea can live in the filth. Feed your animals nutritious food and include some dry feed in the rainy season. Wash leaves and other plant parts before making medicine from them. You can make medicine from fresh or dried neem and nirgudi leaves. Mix the paste or powdered leaves with water or buttermilk to treat your animal for diarrhea. You can also use guava leaves. We green the fresh leaves of shisham and give it the juice. We also soak tamarind fruit pulp in water for half an hour and give that water to the sick animal. 
take your animal to a veterinarian if they do not get better in a few days. Your wealth depends on your livestock's health. So keep your animals healthy by using homemade herbal medicines. Thank you, Dr. Nithya. And thank you for playing that video as well. It gives a good perspective to the uh, value of having these videos present there as well. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Yes. Yes, Dr. Nitya. No, no, I just said thank you. <laughs> please go ahead. So uh, anybody has any questions or thoughts, comments, please feel free to add your questions in the Q&A and uh, your thoughts and comments in the comment box, in the chat box. Yes. Uh, now moving on. Uh, now the question is, uh, so a natural question that I will end up asking is, you know, how can these videos support farmers in their transition from natural transition towards natural or organic farming and have we gained any insights or learnings over these years while we've seen in this transition so uh, to to address this question i would like to invite uh, dr mahesh chander uh, who is the head of division of extension education at the indian veterinary research institute of icar uh, he has closely, carefully worked on this subject. So I would invite Dr. Mahesh Chanderji to give us his thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Riga. I shall share my screen. First of all, I thank Access Agriculture for giving me this opportunity. And it has been my pleasure to be associated with Access Agriculture for almost now 10 years. And I have been associated with the online survey done by Access Agriculture in 2015, 18, and also the last survey in 2021. So based on my experience of working with online survey and the feedback coming from those who are participating in the survey, I'm sharing my thoughts why excess agriculture is needed in India. Because agriculture has been working mostly in African continent and there are and a lot many participants of the surveys, most of them they were from the African continent. A few of them were from the Asia, from Bangladesh, Nepal, India. So why Mahesh, I feel that... Mahesh, yeah. can you put it in full screen, please? Yeah, sorry. Is it okay now? Full screen. Yes. Is it okay? I put it in full screen. Is it okay now? It's still small. It doesn't show as full screen. No, but I did it. It is showing full screen in my eyes. Yeah. No problem. Keep it. No problem. Yes. That's okay. So you see, extension services should be efficient and effective. But the problem is that. The ratio of extension workers to farmers in India is low because one extension agent is serving 1,162 farmers. It's too huge to serve for an extension worker. Over 59% of the farm households in India received no assistance from either government or private agriculture extension service as per an SSO survey done in 2013. This is more than 50% of them, they are not getting extension advice. Of the 41% of households who receive extension assistance, only 18 were served by government extension agents like Kirsi Vigyan Kendra and agricultural universities. Most farmers depended on other farmers, 20%. For most radio, TV, newspapers, again, 20% private commercial agents. They are input dealers. They do have their own interests. This is, and the public extension system reaches only 5% of the smallholder farmers compared to 12% of the large farmers. So this gives an idea about what kind of extension system we are having. So we are having a very huge infrastructure in terms of agriculture universities, Krishi Vigyan Kendra, over 731 we have almost, but still the huge population is not able to effectively catered by these extension agents. So that's and why we need, yes, please. Uh, these uh, slides are not moving. 
this is the only first slide I was running. Uh, okay. This, is it now shifted? Second slide is this. Hari, is it visible? No. No. Do you want to go back uh, from the uh, uh, full screen? You can go back to the normal one. Show us from there. So I, I'm, taking, I'm taking some access. Sifni, okay, online. Sifni. Yes, now it is. You can share again. Yes. Is it okay now? Yes. It works. Thank you. So, so the farmers need timely information, you know. So right information at right time through appropriate channel is crucial for to take informed decision on farming practices, including marketing of produce. So this all extension people know this thing, right information at the right time, using appropriate channel is very important for taking right farming decisions. The national objective of doubling the farmer's income cannot be achieved with successful without successful delivery of agriculture extension due to limited staff and its action. As I've told, and that is also that limited staff is not going to be helped because there is huge fund crunch because of the budgetary deficit and that not enough money is available for extension activities. And at least extension agent cannot be recruited as much required. So we have to complement that work to using certain channels like videos, TV programs, especially and uh, videos what the excess agriculture has been producing. Farmers can help themselves to a great extent if they can learn from good, good videos on farming practices. Not many agencies, but not many agencies within India are currently engaged in producing good quality for videos on farming practices. Also, no one is providing such videos freely downloadable. Even if some agencies are producing, but this download is not available. Say, for example, access, and then in that sense, access agriculture is the only platform. It provides videos which are good quality videos and which are downloadable also and that it is available globally so so somebody may say that there are youtube offers free viewing but it's the videos cannot be downloaded that is the limitation with youtube videos huge number of videos are there so but this excess agriculture videos what we have seen very targeted they address the problems at the grassroots what farmers are exactly facing in the different regions you know there are location specific problems are there say for example in india we, we are very diverse many states are there we have agroecology different we are growing different crops or problems some are thailand some are the rain fat some irrigated all are having agriculture problems to be addressed so but the, the good thing about uh, access agriculture videos is that they are location specific so this is what i have seen uh, my experience so somebody would ask that why agriculture access videos are so good so let me tell you access agriculture certain thing is agroecology especially on family farms if you look at observe these videos they have been sought in the farming conditions and many a time the farmers they have been interviewed they are being interviewed interaction is being heard in the local language as far as possible. So they are very much based on the grassroots realities, addressing grassroots level problems. As excess agriculture videos are short, practical film to be a high quality with the relevant information and free of advertisements. Many a time videos are available, but there are huge advertisements uh, to short video and coupled with the advertisement that distracts the attention of people. This is what is not the problem with excess agriculture. We're demonstrating how of something, making them very effective, you know. So it is actually, it says these videos, as you have seen just now, in Nitya, uh, video shown by uh, Dr. Nitya, that it is a practical problem faced by the farmers, herders in the field conditions. And the farmers, the interaction is being shown and how the remedy and what it, how it is to be prepared that is a kind of an action oriented video. This is what is the beauty of excess agriculture videos. Various excess agriculture videos show how women group can act organize to provide natural input to the farming community. So nowadays we are talking of farmer producer organization, self help group, so many things. 
So that is also the theme being addressed by excess agriculture. Excess agriculture videos address country specific needs in terms of language and technical contents. I will give you one very good example. So when the zero budget natural farming was being promoted by Andhra government, so excess agriculture came, uh, produced videos in local language in Telugu. A good number of videos were made on zero budget natural farming. So it was very relevant. Farmers will be happy to see in their own language and something this government is talking about and for the transition from the conventional agriculture to uh, natural farming or organic farming or what, whatever they call zero budget natural farming. So excess agriculture was very much helpful in doing so. Say for example, uh, conservation agriculture. Some universities and some government organizations may investment on the state they were uh, trying to promote conservation agriculture. So excess agriculture came handy again to produce videos on conservation agriculture. So uh, let me give you some insights from the excess agriculture online survey. So in 2021, 2,976 people from 106 countries took an online survey for excess agriculture. Of these respondents, 16% were extensionists. 13% were farmers and 13% were educators. A medium sized organization like Access Agriculture, which is much lower than a national extension agency, can could reach to over 30 million farmers in at least 106 countries. You see the impact, how, how far it could reach these videos. So that we learned through the uh, online survey we did. And the response was also good, 2,976 people responded. Most viewers was on TV or listen on the radio through the soundtrack. 30 million viewers include 1 million who were reached in a small group facilitated by extensions because the organized groups, uh, extension people, extension professional, they sold these videos to farmers. Many civil society organizations and NGOs were involved in the screening of these videos. Some neighboring farmers also, they collected their neighbors and they sold their videos. And the TV sets are in certain countries. TV sets, through TV sets could be, uh, see these videos in the evening and a convenient time to the farmers. This, this training of these videos were organized by the extension staff of the, in many countries. People use the videos to learn ideas, to share with others. Almost 62% of the respondents, they said that they share with other people to screen in rural communities, 59% said this. To share with organizations, 40% shared with other organizations. To share on social media, 34%. And to distribute on memory cards for mobile phones, 16% of the respondents revealed that one. So the videos were accessed by a relatively young audience. This is one good thing that we, we, we depend on young people now there because they are the future farmers. So, but these excess agriculture videos were mostly watched by the young audience, implying the digital media may be a good way to engage the next generation of farmers who are often entering niche market that include organic or agroecological produce. We know that organic is now trying to come to mainstream. Niche market is has been now, but now it, we are trying to by reducing the cost, price premiums, and it is going to be a mainstream now no longer niche, it is coming out from the niche. And that process to speed up for that transition, videos can be very helpful. Many educators who respond to the survey are showing agriculture videos in classrooms also, a further avenue for reaching young farmers and future extensions. Say for example, many KVKs in India, all decades of extension education, they organize classroom situation wherein these videos can be screened. Mobile phones are a key vehicle for sharing videos as evidenced by growing number of people who are downloading the 3GP phone friendly versions of access agriculture's videos. Because access agriculture is continuously doing research on this aspect. How to make these videos more farmer friendly, more user friendly. Say for example, just Paul was saying that they are in the process of developing an app, which will, it will make further these videos more effective and easy to, uh, uh, access this one. The online videos are so highly appreciated that people who find them on the internet so showed them by screening them or sending links to others. Some 5,000 organizations receive links from the, <coughs> from, that, from the survey respondents with no direct contact from access agriculture. Many are not in direct touch with access agriculture, but 
the those who are in touch with exercise literature, they are saying capital. So, for example, I may share myself in my social media channels. If I feel that some people may they find it useful, I can share it. Likewise, anyone who is in touch with and he can share it further. 99% of the respondent thought videos had made a positive impact on farmers' lives, especially by improving yields. This is what is the response from the respondent. This is what I'm not saying, but the, the survey result said this, that especially by improving yields, they say that once they watch the excess agriculture videos, it helped improve yields by better pest management, by improving soil management, better quality produce, improve, improving income, better food and nutrition, and fostering a deeper appreciation of local values. Because I have seen that access agriculture videos, they draw from the community. They take ideas from the community and they translate this into videos so that people feel connected to it because it is solving some of their problems so that they feel connected to this one. So what I feel the next step is, so what it can be done with, as extension services struggle to reach the words farmers with appropriate information on agroecology, ICTs are rapidly becoming more available across the global south. So now, since extension agents are not there for the face-to-face -face extension, so it has to be using some media. So videos are obviously ideal choice, especially high-quality videos as being made by access agriculture. Most farmers now have a cell phone and can access information via videos. Currently, access agriculture organizations specializing in improving agroecology videos online for free downloading. If you see the over the years, now in the recent times, access agriculture has also changed its priorities to, to agroecological based, organic farming, natural farming based. As the government wants that, we should have more advisories on natural farming, on organic farming. Government of India is trying to promote organic and natural farming in a big way. So there the excess agriculture is also taking up this priority to molding, it's changing it, switch over to those videos which are needed by the farmers and as well. Producing environmentally sound, healthy food profitably, how it can be done, demands that millions of farmers is speaking in their language, they are reached. Online videos can merge quality and quantity, reaching many farmers for <coughs> They can test on their farm. These ideas, so when they watch a video, they want to test it on their field and they can test it. Once they test it, find it, and they will share with other farmers that what they have seen in excess, video, excess agriculture videos, they found it correct. It works. Then it will multiply the effect of the videos. The Indian government is supporting the transition to natural and organic farming in a big way, aiming global market for ecological organic products as excess agriculture videos can effectively help in this. So it can complement the efforts with all government organizations like us, manage ICR, and all other universities they are doing. Excess agriculture, once it arrives in India and they start working more closely with the Indian communities and extension workers, they will be able to produce more focus and more effective videos. This is what I believe. Farmers and extension agents are experienced and trained, but oriented in conventional agriculture. You see the extensive conversion like gel we are trained into. But as far as natural farming, organic farming is that, so that skill is required. So if videos are there, it will not only be helpful to the farmers, it will also help the extension agents because it can be helped to train extension agents. So what I believe is standard collaboration with extension professionals and researchers can help to enrich the access agriculture video platform and contribute to a great digital extension experience to transform Indian agriculture. So there can be a very good synergy between extension agents in India and the access agriculture videos if we work very closely. So access agriculture adapting to the local audiences. These videos, if you look at it, they, they connect very well with the Indian audiences. Professor Swaminathan, they rightly he said that he appreciated the work of Access Agriculture after watching all these videos. So he has given a very good, appreciable thought on this Access Agriculture. That itself says, if people like Swaminathan, they appreciate the work of Access Agriculture. That justifies that the, that speaks about the significance of Access Agriculture for the Indian agriculture transformation. So finally, I want to say that access agriculture mm -hmm. can accelerate transformation in Indian agriculture digitally. So digital transform. This is what we are. We all are looking for 
So we are hoping a great deal from SS Agriculture to transform Indian agriculture and especially to switch over to natural to organic farming on agroecological dimensions along with many conventional agriculture practices. So thank you very much. So I'm very happy to speak about something what I gained over the years by watching this access agriculture and working with access agriculture through online service. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mahesh Chanderji. Thank you for sharing your insights and learnings. And you've rightly pointed out the necessity of these videos and these tools for extension systems. And with that, I would like to invite Dr. Chandrasekhara. Uh, he is the Director General of Manage, which is the National Institute of Agriculture Extension Management. And Dr. Chandrasekhara is a leading thinker in agriculture extension management. So uh, uh, I would like to invite him to also speak a, speak a little bit about how uh, this becomes a relevant tool for the extension workers, officers, and at that level. Yes. Uh, to <clears throat> everyone, uh, thank you, Ria, SCNF, and Dr. Paul, Access Agriculture, for this opportunity. Uh, 10 years, 500 or 5,000 organizations, and 90 million farmers. It's not a small achievement. My compliments to Access Agriculture for this dedicated service to uh, farming community. Before I get into um, you know, my presentation, a word about manage it is a national institute of agriculture extension management we are mandated to organize training research consultancy policy advocacy international programs education implementation of government of india uh, programs uh, for strengthening agricultural extension systems in the country uh, normally we conduct around 500 programs reaching more than 50000 people uh, including our you know developmental programs implementation is concerned. Uh, another one or two things I would like to share with you, which are very much relevant to the topic which we are discussing before shifting to the PowerPoint presentation. Number one, uh, after uh, recent announcement made by Honorable Prime Minister about natural farming, uh, manage is designated as nodal agency and the knowledge repository for promotion of natural farming. We have started working with our partners and uh, work is in progress. In the, pro in the process, I have realized that the films play a very important role. Uh, when we want to reach a very big nation, you know, 28 states, uh, 6 union territories, and uh, people speaking different languages, agroclimatic conditions and crops, probably, you know, and uh, on the other side, the emergence of, you know, ICT technologies, and uh, they are available in the hands of farmers. It's a very conducive atmosphere where we can use uh, films very effectively uh, in agricultural extension. So natural farming is not an exception and uh, we are going to use uh, very extensively. Um, very, uh, yesterday we kick-started the master trainers training program around 225 uh, you know, uh, participants from different parts of the country. They are participating in online uh, training program. And these uh, master trainers, once they complete the program, uh, they will be uh, teaching about um, uh, natural farming at district level to different stakeholders, including Panchayat Pradhan and all. The third thing, very recently we had organized an uh, agriculture film festival for the first time in the country. So we organized agriculture film festival on 11th March. We wrote to all the states, you know, three months in advance. If you have any agriculture film, kindly share with us. And uh, we will be very happy to post those films on Manage website and also take use these films in agriculture extension activities. So in a three months period, uh, we received uh, more than 273 films covering 11 languages and 20 states. And uh, on March 11th, uh, you know, we had organized uh, agriculture film festival, our distribution ceremony. So once the program was over, we received, I'm sure that uh, next year, uh, whether it is uh, organizations like Antara or Access Agriculture or uh, NCNF will be our partners in organizing such films, festival. Once we completed the film festival, instantly we received requests from 
two corners. Number one, Didi Kisan. It's a 24 hours agriculture channel which reaches uh, you know all the farmers in the country. They told you just share films with us. We would like to telecast through our good films. We would like to telecast through you know Didi Kisan. Second one from the government quarter. How can we use you know these agriculture films to train budding bureaucrats? You know Indian Administrative Service and other people. So we are working on that. These are all the two instant outcomes of organizing you know agriculture film festival. So this is one area where uh, extension badly needs support because Dr. Mahesh Chandra told you know extension worker to farmer ratio is very narrow. It's very difficult to reach all the farmers. So moving on, I would like to share a, a small presentation. Hope it is visible. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I will be focusing my discussion on natural farming. See, on December 16th, Honorable Prime Minister made a statement. He told, you know, take field level practices which are available with the people uh, into confidence while promoting natural farming. He said, learn from the past, relearn the ancient knowledge of agriculture. And third thing is, you know, convert the natural farming into a mass movement. Mass movement means we have to reach 1.4 billion population. I think films are badly needed in this extension work, where we have very few extension organizations and extension worker, but, uh, you know, a uh, large number of farmers are there. And, uh, you know, he also emphasized that one village of every panchayat which natural farming, it is a Herculean task. You know, awareness has to be created. That is the first step. Films definitely play a very important role. So being an extension organization, we have identified some of the activities, potential activities in promotion of natural farming. You can see, you know, all these activities everywhere. You know, a small bunch of people are trying to reach out the entire nation. And every activity, I'm sure that agriculture films are going to play a very important role. Access Agriculture should make a note of this. And uh, NCNF, certainly, you know, they're all our, our partner too. I'm sure that we can take Access Agriculture into the fold and which are the relevant films, we can start using them. Awareness creation and capacity building of master trainers and other stakeholders. We started with one program. Maybe over a period of time, another uh, one or two programs will be there. Uh, slightly we are late for this program, but I'm sure that uh, Ria will make note of this and uh, next master trainers training program, we can start using uh, relevant films. That segregation with the permission of agriculture access we can make. Providing technical handholding to master trainers through dedicated experts. See, I like the idea of a smart computer where even without you know uh, internet connectivity, yeah, experts or extension workers can make use of smart computer and they can start educating the people. This is the technology what we want, you know, to happen at the, you know, grassroots level. So when we go to uh, very remote places in the Northeast or hilly areas or islands, these are all the practical problems we face. That is where smart, smart computer like, you know, uh, get gates can help us a lot. A creation of online platform on natural farming. We are working on that. Outreach through social and other conventional media. We have started establishing network of experts on natural farming. It's a very challenging task. I wrote to all the agriculture universities, ICR organizations, kindly share any technologies which you have generated on natural farming. The response is yet to come, but the civil society and uh, you know uh, NGOs, they are very quick to respond. We started getting community validated uh, success stories. I think they are the first act to make our you know, awareness program to start. Developing community resource persons, already they are there in the state of Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Maharashtra, and many other states. But uh, we have to institutionalize this, that process we have started. Developing one model village on natural farming in each block and documenting the entire process part and disseminating to other villages. See, in a, in a block, maybe around 100 villages. If you start in one village, what about other 99 villages? Maybe film is the very effective media. 
developing a repository of community validated good practices and success stories on natural farming certainly <clears throat> there are uh, you know yes. language neutral voice backup can be given we can share with other states see success story of maharashtra if you want to share with gujarat uh, you know film can play very important role we can change the language but you can use the success stories so we are started working at uh, you know uh, it is in a very nascent stage because we started uh, you know uh, very seriously working from uh, beginning of this one this is the first week of action so we are working at national level working with ICRR and uh, state level committees uh, and ataris state agriculture universities we are working very closely district level krishi vigyan kendras and atmas and the grassroot levels in uh, atma itself we have uh, atms and btms block technology managers and assistant technology managers so you know large number of uh, uh, one side resource persons other side extension workers are available at different levels you know cross communication is very important but there should not be any communication distortion we have to have a common you know communication channel so probably film is one i identify is a very potential channel i think uh, we can use uh, extensively so uh, i am asked to talk on you know the broader uh, you know extension uh, platforms available for promotion of agriculture films see manage is promoting agripreneurs we have established we have trained 79000 plus agripreneurs across the country 34000 uh, have established agri ventures probably they are the best people to use these films desi trained input dealers around 71000 input dealers uh, uh, have been trained by manage and uh, we are talking about the desi 2.0 that is how a desi trained input dealer can reach the farmers probably uh, this smart computers like you know get gates and uh, films which are already available they can help a lot we have a program for in situ capacity building of extension functionaries 22000 officers have been trained under manage program they can make use of this and uh, we have a post graduate diploma in warehouse management anything related to warehouse cold storage and uh, the storage based kind of you know films probably useful to this particular group and another program we have trained around 7500 people they specialize in uh, integrated nutrient management and after completion of this course they get uh, fertilizer and pesticide uh, you know licenses so this film because they are spread across the country see this is a uh, very difficult to maintain common curricula so probably if we have the films that can be shared Uh, you know translated into local language and we can use this materials and certified farm advisor or certified livestock advisor 813 people they are with us for more than a year and they are the super specialist in a particular area and in turn today morning we had interaction with one of the uh, certified livestock advisor from telangana he himself proactively conducted 45 weekly webinars which is attended by you know and an average 100 to 200 participants every week so every one is a mobile extension institution probably these people can be very effectively used uh, in uh, dissemination of our knowledge then uh, we have created a platform called seva uh, service extension through volunteer association retired professionals can uh, join manage and start uh, you know serving the farmers and uh, national network of agriculture journalists nas is another platform around 220 members are there probably they like our association with access agriculture most because they want to see more number of films they are agriculture journalists we are also training uh, you know rural youth in uh, income generating activities around 35000 rural youth have been trained probably this is one program where we can maximum make use of access agriculture films and uh, because at grassroots level Uh, getting a very effective trainer or a experienced uh, practitioner to teach income generating activity you know we are finding difficulty probably the film screen play very important role and uh, manage to develop to more than 100 national facilitators they uh, work with a different organization but they associate with uh, you know extension organizations and programs throughout the country and uh, throughout the year 
that entire activity is facilitated by manage and uh, we have established to manage a few academy and uh, we are working with uh, uh, no 10000 is not the figure we are supposed to pro promote 10000 farmers producers organization but we have created a academy where uh, we can uh, assist government in capacity building work so these are all few things i just wanted to you know share with you there is a great opportunity for using films uh, in uh, agriculture extension we have created platforms only thing we have to channelize agriculture films through these platforms and uh, manage is the place we can connect these two dots thank you very much thank you so much chandrashekar ji for sharing that extensive plan and details of it now i think the question naturally comes down to is that uh, can how can these videos or the various offerings that the access agriculture is offering ict tools how can they help in scaling natural farming across india and i uh, on this regard i would actually invite uh, uh, mr vijay kumar tadam tvk sir who is a retired ias officer and is the executive vice chair of rvss in andhra pradesh uh, rvss in andhra pradesh has been able to implement agroecology at a large scale in fact one of the largest efforts uh, that has been carried out in the world uh, i'm afraid um, tvk sir has not been able to join because of an international delegation in andhra pradesh uh but uh he has graciously offered her uh, sent us a small note an essay of sorts of what he wants to share and uh, i would invite savitri ji from access agriculture to read out the speech that uh, tvk sir wanted us to hear thank you dear so this is the message from mr vijay kumar sanam who is the executive vice chair of rvss we are very honored to get his speech I convey my sincere thanks to Access Agriculture for inviting me as the chief guest of today's workshop on Learn and Earn from Natural Farming videos. I'm truly sorry that I can't attend the event because of current state government obligations, but I would like to share these few words with all the participants. Most of you know that Andhra Pradesh is an example of practicing natural farming not only in India but all over the world. for organizations and countries who care about natural and organic farming with recent government initiatives especially with the honorable prime minister's recent address to the agriculture scientists natural farming has turned into a movement across the country the indian government has already allocated a good amount of funds to take it forward in eight states the andhra pradesh state wide agroecology program called ap community managed natural farming is an innovative and transformative solution for agriculture it represents the universal principles of agroecology and local and traditional practices its vision is to enroll all 6 million farmers and farm workers and cover all the crops by 2027 and complete the transformation by 2030 it is important to realize that the transformation to agroecology from conventional synthetic chemicals based agriculture will require dissemination of relevant knowledge hand holding of farmers and ensure that women's collectives are supported so that they can take a lead in this transformation process already we see the impressive scaling up in ap which is due to impact on the ground made by innovative farmers the social capital of rural women collective knowledge dissemination through champion farmers and the long term support by government and civil society organizations we are very impressed with the work of access agriculture which has a wide collection of communication material on agroecology principles and practices we are looking forward to strong collaboration between our ISS and access agriculture we see access agriculture as an important partner in a long term vision to help scale natural farming across districts and states in india and other parts of asia and africa 
and also to build capacities in India to produce videos for documenting good practices in natural farming. You have already heard Paul talk about access agriculture in great detail and were able to listen to a diverse range of partners who have experience working with access agriculture and their resources. I hope today's workshop will be successful and we'll all be able to work together with Access Agriculture in India and beyond. Thank you all for your patient hearing. Wishing all the best to this important workshop and its outcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Savitri, and thank you, TVK Sir, for graciously sending us the essay as well and with the message. Thank you so much. Uh, now, if you remember when Paul was giving a brief about the different different aspects that are there that are in offering and the different activities that they conduct. So Paul mentioned about one particular activity wherein uh, at the grassroots levels, uh, they use solar powered smart projectors and which helps people, uh, it's like a library which helps people to look at, watch the videos at the uh, grassroots levels, right? Uh, and part of this was a model which was rolled out, which is called the Entrepreneurs for Rural Access. Uh, and that is where the more of the youths were involved. So to know a little bit more about this particular activity, which is Entrepreneurs for Rural Access, uh, we will now play a short video about uh, Kumar Neeraj, who is a farmer from Bihar. He's a young farmer. So uh, Raman, please do share the video. The remote eastern part of Bihar state in India, made up of plains near the mighty river Ganges. Here, farmers are coping with a changing climate and many other challenges. One person who recognized the issues was Niraj Kumar. Niraj had gone to university and qualified with a law degree, but then decided that he wanted to help the farmers in his community. In 2017, he set up a small local NGO called Keti to use agroforestry as an integrated approach to combat climate change and boost incomes. Small far farmers, they don't have land. So we can't practice or buy a land just for experimentation. So we go and talk with the big farmers so that they can provide a small piece of land for experimentation. And that experimentation is done by smallholder farmers. For them, it's a livelihood project. When Access Agriculture received money from the Digital for Development Prize awarded by the Belgian government, they opened a competition for young entrepreneurs. Niraj was one of the winners. He outlined how he would use the prize of a Digisoft smart projector as part of his outreach work, as well as earn money by hiring the equipment to other organizations. Niraj saw the immense value of having access to quality training videos in the Hindi language. The name itself is uh, Smart Projector, so it's obviously uh, it is a kind of uh, uh, video dictionary for farmers where uh, we search for a word and its meaning. Farmer can get the crop and its uh, procedure and meaning. They can understand uh, how to take best harvest and how we can uh, not only quality and quantity as well. To provide a way to reach out to farming families and landless laborers, Niraj decided to train a team of young people from the local community. His outreach team, both male and female, learned how to travel from village to village with the equipment. These villages are without electricity or internet connection. But thanks to the solar-powered smart projector, farmers can see practical videos in their own language. After watching the video, we learn to grow paddy with less water in a stepwise manner. We will plow the field, do tilling and help control grass and weeds. Then we will plant paddy by maintaining the distance between seedlings. Due to this, weeding becomes easier and it can give good results. If we do this method, we will get a good yield. This is the benefit. 
By following techniques demonstrated by other farmers from around the world, the profitability of their farms can increase. But how can showing videos be turned into a business? The thing we do is, we gather farmers here from nearby villages once a week or month and charge a small amount that they can afford for watching the videos. We can also show educational videos to children or elderly people of the village. This way we can develop a viable business model. Using the knowledge of other smallholder farmers from around the world, there's now a way of teaching new techniques to neglected communities in Bihar state. By regularly watching videos and then discussing what they have seen, these farmers in Bihar are able to slowly improve their livelihoods and care for the environment. In the community, our volunteers are showing videos on smart projectors. In different villages, people use different agriculture practices, so people get to see the videos of their choice. Niraj and his team of volunteers are creating a business opportunity in this remote area. And at the same time, they're helping farmers to build their incomes. It is important to learn from other farmers to overcome our mistakes. We are learning from other farmers so that we won't repeat those mistakes. Those who have not seen this, they do not realize that they should adopt such practices. Now as we watch, we realize that someone is doing it and we should also adopt it. Niraj is just one of a growing number of entrepreneurs for Rural Access, a worldwide initiative of access agriculture that's changing the way information can be delivered to remote communities. I will say it's a video dictionary for uh, farmers, which is uh, which can be best because farmer listen to farmer, not to scientists. Smart projector, smart service providers, smart farmers. Thank you, Raman, for playing that video. I think it clearly brings out how uh, how Entrepreneurs for Rural Access is actually taking these videos to the remotest and remotest of people and giving access to all of them, like how the uh, the farmer Didi actually mentioned, right? They got to see it. Uh, but I uh, one natural question that comes in is that the ones who are facilitating the process, right, the entrepreneurs, they do need good coaching and mentoring to facilitate those local level of discussions, right? Uh, so some entrepreneurs, so as part of a program uh, which is just recently started, some entrepreneurs are being chosen in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, and they will be guided by Monica Lingiridi and Paki Nandini. So I invite Monica and Paki uh, to switch on their videos because I have a couple of questions for them. Uh, to tell us a little bit more about the coaching and the mentoring process. Uh, so I invite Monica and Paki to switch on the videos. Okay. Yes. Hi, Monica. So, uh, and hi, Paki. So the Hello. first, yes. So the first question I have is for Monica. Monica, why do you think the entrepreneurs uh, will be needed? Why do we need them? Yeah, yeah. thank you, Ria, yeah. for inviting me. Um, so, entrepreneurs are very useful in disseminating these videos, in, uh, in taking these videos to very rural communities or remote areas where there is no access to electricity and knowledge and all, and also internet. So, entrepreneurs are needed very much for taking these videos to very remote villages and they can motivate farmers they can follow up farmers until they adopt natural farming so they can assist farmers through access agriculture app uh, in downloading the videos quality videos necessary videos 
and all. Yeah. Thank you, Monica. So, a uh, Park Parky, uh, Parky Nandini. Uh, yeah. This for you. Uh, so, when you have visited different communities, what is the kind of reactions or response that you yeah. have? Yeah, actually, as a part of our promotion, we visited different places in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Mainly in Andhra Pradesh, we went to tribal areas where there is a no access to any internet or any electricity. So when they saw our videos, like uh, in like Sitama Peta and Sriya column, there is a their, their main crop is pineapple and cashews. They grow in the seasons. So when they saw the video on the uh, solar drying of the pineapples or how to make cashew juice from the cashew apples, they felt very happy because in the season, so much of waste is done due to lack of proper market. So if they can uh, use this process of solar drying or to make a juice from the cashew fruits, it will add some value to their produce. Or uh, we went to Anantapur and Chittor where we interacted with the tomato growing farmers where in seasons the tomato price is going very low or they don't have any infrastructure or storage facility to store. So we saw the video related to how to build a natural way to build a, a pool chamber, pool chamber to store tomatoes. And the farmers were very, very happy because it can store tomatoes up to one to two months. So they can get the premium prices when they sell in the market. Thank you. Interesting. So I have one question for either of you, whoever wishes to answer. Just one more question. Uh, we saw the smart projectors being used, and I think that is very key in when we do the, uh, the program, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think smart projectors are useful? Why do you think they're useful? Uh, because uh, through smart projectors, we can go to remote areas where there is no access to electricity and internet. So we actually faced a problem when we, uh, as part of our promotion, uh, we went to tribal areas there. We, are, we have only laptop, we didn't have projector. There, uh, the people have projector, but there is no electricity. But uh, we have people, around 200 people gathered there. But we we unable to show the video. We are unable to show the video. That time, we felt our projector is very useful in these areas. So it is very useful in the tribal areas where there is no access to electricity and internet. So this is very and, useful. Yeah, and it's a great to extension tool where we can reach almost 150 to 200 audience at a time. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you so much, uh, Monica and Paki Nandini, for sharing us your, you. and your learnings. Uh, now, I would actually, uh, first of all, I would in encourage all of you to please share in your questions and thoughts in the Q&A or in the chat box. Please do share. We will be opening the uh, forum for discussion soon. But just before we do that, I would like to invite a set of different organizations who have been using Access Agriculture videos since some time, right? Uh, want to understand what their views have been of using these videos. So first, uh, I'd like to invite Dr. R. Rengalakshmi ji. Uh, she is the Director of Ethnology at the uh, MS Swaminathan Research Foundation in Chennai. Uh, Dr. Rengalakshmi ji. Share your views. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ria, and uh, thank you, Access Agriculture. Uh, this has been a kind of a great partnership with Access Agriculture. Uh, and since 2016, we have been working with them, uh, and they trained our uh, feed stuff first. Then, in turn, we trained farmers in producing the videos. But uh, the journey. Uh, during the last six to seven years, that's been a kind of an interesting experience for us. How these videos are making a kind of an impact at the farmers' level in facilitating a kind of an farmer to farmer learning process. So, in this uh, presentation, I'll just share our experience and how we went about it. Is my screen moving? 
Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, before getting into this uh, formal presentation, uh, uh, Swaminathan Research Foundation is a kind of development and research institution started in 1989. The vision is to gain science and society for equitable and sustainable development. So in that context, it plays a major role in facilitating the form the formal learning. And the mission is to develop, demonstrate pilot models on sustainable agriculture with the mandate of pro work, pro giving, and pro nature. These three themes are uh, kind of an every all of our interventions. And our uh, primary stakeholders are small farmers, fishers, tribal communities, and planters, agriculture neighbors. So when we get into the main activities uh, associated with access agriculture, so three workshops, uh, access agriculture team. Trained MSSR of team in producing videos, translating videos, writing scripts, and uh, fact sheets. So, uh, these uh, initial capacity building helped us to take a kind of a lead in producing uh, farmer friendly learning materials through videos in the field situation. So far, we have uh, completed nine videos, both uh, in English and Tamil, and 12 videos got translated to local language and Tamil. And the third aspect is promote video based learning. That is the main core activity. And uh, this we are doing through village knowledge centers. Village knowledge centers are a kind of centers working at the village level, uh, helping people to get locale specific information using different ICT tools, in which uh, video based learning is a kind of an, one of the tools to facilitate the learning, uh, especially to introduce the technology, make uh, their uh, knowledge and skills are uh, improved. Then, through our village knowledge centers, we create a kind of an uh, enabling environment. Enabling environment here, I mean, the backward and forward linkages to adapt the technology. So, in that way, we connect uh, uh, this video based uh, learning from the knowledge uh, building part to practice part. Uh, uh, with that uh, facility of uh, village knowledge center platform we could able to facilitate uh, the whole process uh, in the field then this is uh, the script writing workshop so uh, these two uh, i mean script writing as well as uh, uh, the production part helped our team to gain the professional skills in producing the video and these are all the videos produced in both the languages. And while identifying the theme, we follow a process that uh, we stated that the community should identify the themes which are very relevant or which are, which are in demand for them to immediately see and uh, get some more insights on it. So such a process has been adopted in identifying the theme. And each year we chose two themes and produced the videos with the consultation of the local community. These are all the videos, 12 videos translated in local language uh, based on again uh, the themes which are available, the videos which are available in Access Agriculture website that we downloaded it and shared with the communities um, through village knowledge centers. And they have uh, prioritized these are all the videos which uh, we did in the local language. After that, the translation process got uh, facilitated. And while promoting the video based learning, we adopt a kind of a process again here. Uh, one is the selection of uh, location where we are going to facilitate this process. Then, information to the participants at least five days in advance prior to the meeting so that the facilitation process is completed. And uh, wherever uh, we initiate uh, such kind of uh, learning process, our knowledge center animators play a major role in mobilizing the farmers. Then, selection of the videos to be screened and screening of the video. At this period of time, we ensure that facilitators are available from other end to after the video screening to facilitate uh, the discussion around the video so that um, whatever the technology we have been screening, that can be practiced at the local level. While in, uh, during the discussion, many doubts will come how to uh, uh, refine the technology to their context. Where do they get some kind of inputs related? Those things are addressed at the facilitation process. Then after completing the screening, uh, the evaluation part, the evaluation part prior to the video screening itself, we have a kind of a very short uh, um, pre-evaluation questions. And at the post also, we uh, administered the evaluation questions. And with that, we compare what is the difference in 
the kind of learning we are facilitating. But when we come to the practice level, it takes more time. So uh, we observe those things in the field. And, I'm so, uh, sorry, Doctor, okay. we're losing the sound. Um, I think that thank you very, very much. I think back to Ria, yeah. Thank you, um, Lakshmi ji. So, uh, thank you so much for sharing that. I would like to yeah. move on. Uh, just, just one slide. This is uh, the kind of an impact we are seeing at the field level uh, in enhancing the knowledge as well as translating the learning into practice. So with that, I thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Dr. Rangilachmi ji. You're also showing us that impact the final slide of this, yes. Uh, now, I would like to invite Dr. T.M. Radha. She is the uh, Executive Director of AME Foundation uh, and also the Editor of Lisa India. Uh, and for AME Foundation, it is necessary that farmers are at the center of learning. So I would invite uh, Dr. T.M. Radha she to share her views. Dr. Radha, we invite you to share your experience of using the Access Agriculture video. Sorry, I think it was muted. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah thank you. Uh, let me first thanks, uh, thank Access Agriculture for inviting me for this event and uh, giving me a little bit of time to share my thoughts. Uh, I represent AME Foundation, a little bit of AME Foundation. Uh, AME Foundation started off as an international course way back in 1980s when, when the Green Revolution was at its peak and um, already there were groups of individuals who were concerned about the consequences of uh, high input agriculture. So it started off, a, a started off as an international course in India and later on it became a bilateral project with the government of India and government of Netherlands. And uh, by 2002, we formed it as an Indian foundation basically a trust. Uh, so I can say that Amy has been almost a pioneer in um, promoting ecological agriculture uh, right from 1980s onwards. Uh, Amy's focus has always been on small and marginal farmers, and especially in the dryland areas on the Deccan Plateau. We have been promoting this low external input sustainable agriculture, which we call it as LISA. Uh, our approach has been uh, two-pronged. One has been on the human resource development and social capital, building social capital. Uh, when I say human resource development, it is about uh, capacity building of farmers. Uh, and this capacity building is mostly through farmers field schools. We have always believed that uh, season long uh, training is more empowering and farmers uh, actually, you know, they they learn the science behind the practice. So this has been our approach, and uh, we have always believed that this is more empowering and sustaining also. So the focus has always been on knowledge empowerment. On the other hand, we also have been very uh, we have been doing this knowledge uh, dissemination through our Lisa India magazine. Uh, almost it's uh, more than two decades that we have started uh, Lisa India magazine. Uh, we started it off as an English edition and in the last 10 years we have expanded it to seven more Indian languages. Uh, Lisa India basically is uh, uh, includes practical experiences on agroecology. Actually we are using this word agroecology now but uh, we have been focusing on only agroecological practices from the last 20 years. So we have a um, um, full, uh, I should say, a library of uh, experiences on agroecology. And from English, as I said, we expanded to different uh, language editions to reach the grassroots mainly. So these have been the translated editions of the English edition. And later on, we also um, uh, embraced the digital uh, revolution, basically. We went into the di digital versions and it is gaining popularity among the uh, educated and the people who are connected by net. The association with Access Agriculture has been very recent. I feel uh, we are a very young partner to Access Agriculture. Probably in the last six months, we have been working with Access Agriculture. And 
we have uh, translated uh, some 30 videos uh, into telugu uh, and the process has been very um, enriching for us uh, we had uh, several uh, meetings and workshops with uh, access agriculture team and uh, we have delivered all those uh, videos into telugu and they are now on the website of access agriculture and this was a very new experience for us too uh, we have always been in the print edition or the magazine production uh, where we were very focused on getting the actual real experiences from the field uh, this was something a little bit of uh, uh, something away from what we believed in but uh, uh, not doing the actual videos but only translating probably i see this as a first step and we would like to have more of uh, videos produced from the field of that particular agroecological system so basically because of that actually we when we come to the dissemination also we haven't been able to do it systematically for several reasons one is we we don't have the necessary infrastructure as all of us were talking about this uh, this um, uh, what do i say projector and all the smart projector and all that uh, and also the uh, issues we have at the rural level because we work in remote villages with the small and marginal farmers so uh, th there is an opportunity to do that actually we when we conduct farmer field schools we can definitely do that but probably we plan to do that in the next uh, coming year i mean coming kharif season so that is our plan but uh, we haven't done it systematically to give a feedback on that but one Thank thing you. i would I, i would i would like to say is uh, as of now it is a supply driven videos we would like to have more videos which the farmers would like to see or learn from so that we can do when we produce uh, videos ourselves and also another thing is probably we can build local capacities to produce and uh, you know it, it should become more uh, self sustaining and uh, more ownership should be there with the community this is all i wanted to say thank you very much thank, thank you so much dr raja for sharing your constructive feedbacks mm -hmm. and we hope that you'll get to use it more uh, use the different services of access agriculture more uh, with this i all i invite uh, ms jyoti avasti she is the co-founder and ceo of satat sampada sampada uh, which is a private sector company dedicated to organic farming and uh, she too believes that empowering small holder farmers through videos is important uh, i invite jyoti ji to share her views thank you riya and thank you access agriculture uh, i've been listening to the panelists before and i really feel uh, very elated to be a part of this uh, this gathering today uh, it's a good opportunity to share what we are doing in uttar pradesh which is uh, for people who are from outside india now it's the state of indo gangetic plain which is uh, largely agriculture dominated but we chose to work in areas which were water starved so we are working in bundelkhand area and we are working in the chambal ravine areas of itawa which where you know the the uh, the land is not so fertile and the the soil texture is also not very helpful for the farmers um the whole idea of setting up this social enterprise was to see how we can contribute to uh, sustainable agriculture um, domain and see how some good practices can prevent people from leaving farming because that was the main pain point that motivated us to uh, set up this uh, social enterprise that uh, focused on agriculture so we began in 2016 and uh, the uh, and and the um, the whole mood in the villages was such that you know nothing can happen and you will fail uh, after a year or so you will fail because we have not been able to crack the model and so you will also go back packing but uh, then we said okay let us set up models of diverse agriculture maybe mixing some with horticulture practices and and put up something that really shows to the villagers that organic farming or natural farming does work and uh, there is a market for that so after one year of intensive agriculture model setting up and other things we went on to create a market in delhi ncr uh, because we uh, gradually realized that there has to be exclusive buyers for this because the kind of hard work that goes into natural farming and uh, in the initial years the the low production and uh, you know all that really demotivates farmers so they must see that there are people who are ready to buy this very exclusive exclusively grown pure product they do not want to sell it to the the normal mandi market which just doesn't care how you are growing your crop 
so we uh, set up this exclusive market in delhi ncr and so we are working on 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 two fronts one is uh, you know training farmer groups connecting them with the government of india certification program that is uh, participatory guarantee, uh, guarantee system pgs so that they get the certificates in their hands and uh, uh, and and also uh, developing models of hand processing or or uh, low energy processing in the villages so we are promoting hand pounding of dal uh, hand, uh, stone grinding of uh, various uh, pulses atta and going back to our roots and and, and trying to revive the traditional ways of food processing so that is also another part that we added so that we could have more women working with us and shg is also working with us and uh, simultaneously here in delhi we are uh, doing a lot of sensitization programs for urban co consumers and uh, you know uh, educating them to eat fresh eat local motivate be a part of this food chain wherein some farmers are growing uh, with a lot of uh, responsibility and some consumers are buying with a lot of respect and responsibility towards farmers so this is largely the model of satat sampada and uh, uh, besides uh, itawa so itawa is one place where we are working we are also focusing in lalitpur where we are uh, largely working with vegetable growers and uh, all these years we have introduced several crops uh, to their list and so try to diversify you know their practices their their cropping patterns and gradually also picking up the learning from from this whole experience of ours what are the positive impacts of natural farming or organic farming in the field on the crops in farmers um, uh, economic uh, prosperity so all that is also being gradually taken up uh, yes access agriculture's videos are very helpful because that is one huge gap that we found in the agriculture scenario as the initial earlier uh, panelist also said that extension services are extremely poor and there has a lot of there is a lot of scope of organizations like like access agriculture who are trying to um, converge all sorts of learning from various parts of the world uh, not not only india and show to the farmers you know that this this can happen and as in the previous video that lady that uh, person was saying that farmers listen to only farmers and practitioners so no textbook talks so i think this is the best medium to educate farmers motivate them because there is a lot of despair among farming communities look at how climate is changing uh, past month has shown us that the temperatures have shot up beyond 5 to 6 degrees uh, above normal and crops have really had a very bad bad experience so we need such kinds of things and i would also say that uh, besides the uh, videos that you prepare um, if people like us or organizations like us can also suggest you uh, issues on which you should make such videos and maybe we can be helpful for you in our field because there are a lot of local problems that happen and india being such a diverse country uh, with such a diverse climate and soil conditions etc uh, we would be able to add some more uh, relevant topics to you so that people farmers in our respective areas can feel you know that their problems are also getting solved so this is what i would like to uh, add to the access agriculture's portfolio and uh, see how we can be useful in that so thank you thank you so much and we would like to be connected more more in big action with the this is like thank you apg thank you so much for sharing that uh, i would now invite uh, mr hanuma yes i invite mr hanuma prasad ji uh, he is from the andhra pradesh uh read one of the leading community radio stations called radio vishnu uh where they share videos in telugu language so i want to want to know from mr hanuma prasad ji how are these videos helping uh, uh the radio vishnu and the audience yes hanuma prasad can you hear my voice Yes, I can. It would be good if you can switch yeah. on your video as well. Yeah, actually, actually, I'm traveling. There's a reason I couldn't able to. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting me for this event, and I'm very much excited. And actually, uh, uh, just I wanted to share my experience about this access agricultural videos and audios as well. And uh, ours is a very oldest uh, community radio. Actually, we established in two thousand seven. and uh, we are uh, at present we are reaching close to 2 lakh people 
and through our uh, community radio. And uh, basically, these community radio, we are uh, um, inviting all the farmers and self-help groups and how they are growing and what they are doing. So those kind of stuff we are doing, and we wanted to do such kind of things in future as well. And uh, coming to Access Agricultural videos and all, and uh, one fine morning, I received an email from Access Agriculture, and uh, uh, there was a link. Okay, then I said that since I'm a program head, as well as I'm a station in charge for uh, Radio Vishnu, and I look after all these matters. So then what I thought was, okay, let's see that uh, videos, how it works, and is it useful for the community or not? So because we are closely uh, working with uh, Krishi Vijnana Kendram, and uh, paddy research uh, uh, institutes and uh, we have another horticulture uh, university ysr horticulture university just nearby us so we we are the close associates with them and uh, if there is anything if there is any requirement for the farmers definitely we'll go there we'll go to the kvks and also we'll ask the questions and how it works and all so after that once i see all those videos and we wanted to recheck for example, if something a link comes and all, we have seen the videos or audios, and we will double check uh, with the KVK people. And uh, I downloaded all the videos and uh, audios as well. I have sent to KVK. And can you uh, have a look about these uh, uh, videos and audios? So can uh, be, uh, can we broadcast or not? So like that, because just for this opinion sake, I have sent and. Uh, they were amazed and they said that oh my god, it's really helpful for the farmers. And uh, they said that okay. Whenever they are the um, farmers meet and all, so we are going to uh, play all those videos. Is there any problem or is there any copyright act or something like that? Then I said that no, no problem. You can use all those videos and uh, audios as well. So like that, what we are doing and we segregated, I think close to 90 audios are there, 90 videos are there close to, and we download all those things. And I segregated those audios into different, different uh, uh, um, like seasonal wise. For example, the rainy season is coming and there is a diarrhea for the animals and there is a for the this season is for uh, uh, cashew and all those things so we segregated in a seasonal wise and we are broadcasting according to that and we are getting very good response from the uh, farmers and uh, actually even when i talked to mr avinash ji and even i told him if you have any representative of your access agriculture why don't you send us? So since we have very good contacts with all those people, they can directly come and explain all those things to the farmers and they'll be benefited because nowadays everyone is following this organic farming. So a lot of people are interested and they're buying outside the products and all. But the thing is like whether it's a real organic or not, no one can identify. So only if it goes to the testing, then only they can find out if this is organic. So now so many labels are coming, though so many products are coming, they're saying organic, organic. So that's why I requested Mr. Avinash ji, and so can you send someone um, from your access agriculture to this area? Because ours is like 80% um, of people are depending upon uh, these uh, farming. So if you guys can uh, do that, really it's helpful for the farmers. And uh, as far as this videos and audio is concerned, it's really, really uh, um, amazing. And one more thing is the, the di dialects you use, and the voice and everything is very audible and people receiving a lot a lot and uh, we are getting very good compliments from the listeners as well yeah and uh, once again thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, i look uh, forward more and more from you guys thank you so much hanuma ji because you have also showed us that it's not just the video but also the audio can be used up. thank you so much for sharing that perspective uh, i would yeah, now thank you so much I would now like to in, invite uh, Mr. Zuned Maimonji from Green TV, uh, who has been one of the key people who has tried to make sure people take farmers' seed and protect the environment. So I would like to invite Zuned Maimonji to share his experience of uh, using access agriculture videos through Green TV. Uh, Zuned Maimonji. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm here. I'm driving and talking to you. So I'm sorry you might see some disturbance while, while listening to me. Uh, first of the most, thank you so very much for inviting me here. And uh, I've been partner with Access Agriculture, I think more than three years now. And we've done a lot of videos for uh, transition work for them. And the amazing thing is the way the video has been shot, that uh, it can go anywhere. Like I can show an African video in India 
without even reshooting or without adding any shot because the way the the whole thing is explained in it it's amazing then uh, that was eye opener for me because we also make hundreds and thousands of video every year uh, for with a green tv but uh, access agriculture gave us a lot of new learning new way of uh, doing things so i would like to thanks all of them who who gave us the new new exposure to that now my basic point is because we are not uh, i'm i'm not a <clears throat> academician i'm i'm basically a communication person so my basic challenge was always how to reach out to people how to how to make impactful videos and engage with them and then we we came up with a lot of mechanism and we realized it's about seeing and believing so the moment the farmer sees they believe this is possible and uh, our basic idea was to create more aspirational videos so which gives a little bit of a hope for the farmers that they can do if one can do then i also can do so those constant push it was not that okay i'll make one video and I'll leave it they might forget our idea was to keep producing keep producing keep pushing them so this is called nudging theory in my opinion i said it's a nudging theory you keep nudge people that uh, this is the great way to do it you you all can make money farming is also equally profitable if you see it as a business don't just look at it oh it is it is there and i don't know any other job unfortunately india usually it has been like that Our agriculture is always considered oh because i don't know anything or maybe this is the only job i have an option rather you create that as a main option your main career and i would say good or bad both during pandemic we did extensive work with the uh, with the ground people and we pushed them to go back home the people who were working in in, a, in our cities they left their lands they were not doing farming because that our farming is not profitable that became an opportunity for them when we started working them hands on hand and they realized the potential of farming during that point of a time that without food we could not do anything we had all the money we had all the shelters everything but without food the people could not survive and they realized that that what they were missing out so i will say bad what happened but good that our farmers learned a lot during that point of time and became more, more stronger and powerful see because i'm driving middle of the traffic so i wouldn't take too much on this but i would say the the uh, communication and 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 uh, video plays a very very vital role it's been o- almost uh, 11 years we working on it we started in 2012 and it's 2020 uh, we we are doing really well we are very happy with the uh, with our responses with our farmers we have created millions of farmers uh, the, the the network around us and we would we would be continue to work with access agriculture and uh, paul and uh, <coughs> phil both both must be here thank you so very much man to be uh, inviting me as your partner and your communication friend and we'll 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 work together again and do a lot of good work Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Zuneer Ji, for sharing such excitement <laughs> along with you. I'm so excited because this is this is our baby, and I'm very happy that they are starting in India. I, I welcome Agri Access Act Culture to in, in India that you guys are going to change the market. Please mm-hmm. welcome, welcome in it, welcome to India. Thank you so much. Yes, so uh, I think uh, I thank all the partners for having shared their views and their feedback. and uh for extremely i apologize but i'm glad also positive negative both uh we're slightly delayed we'll take another 10 15 minutes more uh we would like to uh open the forum to everyone to ask their questions in case there is and also i would like to invite paul uh salaudin ji savitri uh and also phil to answer questions some of the questions that were asked and phil has been curating the questions together so hand it i'm handing it over to phil to take it forward brilliant thank you so much ria and uh, thank you so much for your hosting i hope uh, that uh, everybody has really learned from this and i loved what zunaid said even though i didn't appreciate the fact he was breaking the law and uh, he was driving and talking on the phone but seeing is believing that's what it's all about some brilliant questions have been coming in thank you for the panelists for answering them as we have been going and so it's something which uh, has really helped and is really working um 
I think one of the first ones to start with is with uh, somebody called Herman Rupp. Is access agriculture aiming for farmer to farmer extension? Someone might be needed to ensure that the, the videos is really proved with regard to correctness, effectiveness, etc. Who is the person doing this for all of the videos? I don't know, does Paul want to start on that or Saladin or Savitri? Who wants to say, who checks the videos to make sure it's not just uh, a bit of gossip? Okay, thanks, Phil. And, and, and thanks a lot for the question, Herman. Uh, there, there is indeed, as if we talk about quality, it's not just about nice footage and good quality sound. It's definitely about about the content and whether the content has been has been validated. And as you can imagine, we've been working for ten years now. the The method that we developed um, to ensure the quality of the content is is really a rigorous one. Uh, without going into details, it's the entire process. I mean, there's a validation component of with the local communities. There is, there is a network of um, international experts. We have our in-house um, mechanism, but also every, every single one of our video partners, when they propose a topic, they also at the same time need to propose who will be their local uh, subject matter specialist. And as Dr. Nitya, for instance, was explaining, anything that has been related to ethno-veterinary medicine. She has played a role in, in, in scripts and content development, also in checking the images afterwards. Um, the Natural Livestock Foundation uh, is a big network of, of veterinary doctors. And like this, we have, we have built up a network of experts who make sure that the content is, is checked and accurate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, I think if we go to uh, Satya Priya from FAO, um, how exactly do you assess the impact of your videos on the community practices? It goes on a little bit from what you were talking. Uh, maybe uh, Saladin, do you want to uh, talk on that one? Thanks, Phil. Uh, I think we have already heard uh, a great detail from Dr. Uh, uh, Chander already that uh, periodically access agriculture conducts impact studies and we also have engagement with the universities where a, a lot a good number of students uh, as part of their uh, graduate programs a phd program and master's program they also conduct impact studies based on some you know experiment done uh, on uh, villages with the farmers. So in different ways, we conduct uh, impact studies and we get information. So the next question I think comes also from Satya. We know that people are watching the videos, but how do we know that they are changing what they do? Maybe Savitri, do you want to uh, talk about that? You've experienced agriculture in Africa and across South Asia. H how does that help? Yeah, thanks, uh, Phil. Yeah, so partly it has been uh, explained by um, uh, Dr. Salaudin that uh, we do conduct hand commission, a lot of impact studies to find out behavioral changes. So those have been also published. So these publications are there on our website and the publication, uh, these are scholarly publications. Plus also when we do um, our uh, last mile delivery activities to the entrepreneurs, so we are also gathering data from them. So when they show the videos, what happens? And then they get back to us. So those are more or less qualitative and uh, you know anecdotal, but then there's, uh, the, there is also evidence after that being built on to support them. Anecdotes. Yeah. Thank you. I think one of the things that people say is how do farmers normally learn? Normally they look over the fence and see what the other person is doing. If they're involved with animals, they have a cup of tea in the market and they discuss about the animals. All these videos do 
is speed up the process. But one of the things that was important that was mentioned, and uh, Dr. Shantaram uh, Gaikwad says this, the videos are in local languages, so farmers like them. Who wants to tell me why the local languages are important? Yeah, I can answer. <laughs> yes, please, Sibiti. Yeah, yeah. Sure, because if you go to remote areas uh, where English and French or the international languages are not spoken, so naturally they would like to, even if they see something interesting, if it's not in their own language, it's very difficult to understand. So it's, uh, it's really important. Our videos cater to the audience who are in the remote areas, uh, farmers. So we would like them to understand our video. So that's why this is the main heart of access agriculture that we should showcase our all the technologies or the practices in the local language. So we do our best to do that. So, so the website is in Hindi, it's in the Bangla Bengali language, it's in English. There are lots of videos in Indian languages, but India is huge. We know how there is leadership about natural farming at the government level. But the main thing that matters is what are the farmers doing on the ground? How can farmers learn from other farmers? How can we build up? I think um, one thing that uh, Jagadish KN was saying, let's explore through Manage in Hyderabad, how they provide the videos on an SD card, for example, but on a payment basis. Freebies will not work. What's your experience as Access Agriculture? Are people prepared to pay to watch the videos? Paul Saladin, maybe? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. And, and I can say um, that we do have experiences, uh, Jagadish, in, in, in different countries in Africa where social enterprises um, are selling actually SD cards through uh, different mechanisms, through different channels. Uh, that farmers are willing to pay. Um, in the past, also community radio stations have been selling DVDs and farmers pay $1, $2. Um, so definitely, I, I fully agree. Um, there has also been a PhD study uh, done in Africa that showed that when farmers pay for the content, they valorize it much more and they make more use of it. So I'm, I'm also very keen to explore this in India. And I think your suggestion is definitely something that we should follow up on. Thank you. And I think the whole idea of doing farmer to farmer videos first started in Bangladesh, which is where Saladin is based. And there is use of African videos, there's use of Latin American videos, in an Indian context, in Indian languages. Saladin, how can that work? Surely people just want something from their local environment and to see a farmer that they recognize perhaps. It's true that people want to see their own farmers, but at the same time, when uh, Paul can tell you that when he took all the Bangladeshi videos to Africa, and was playing in Bangla or English, which is not their own language, they were very excited to see all those videos. From where we actually got that in the first round of you know, feedback in terms of how farmer actually prefers to see uh, farmers from other part of the world and they are equally excited to see them. So it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's, not the uh, all the time that true that, that they would like to see their own technology, but they are also excited to see that uh, the, the technology of different countries, different continents are equally adaptable, equally impactful in their lives. Sometimes uh, those uh, also uh, work like an you know exotic thing that they want to learn from and get a uh, lot of information that is not usually available in their localities. So it's always interesting for farmers to know something totally new, which is uh, they can only uh, 
they can try and they can see the impact in their own eyes by listening to the, all those farmers from different parts of the world. Can I just ask um, Jyoti from Satat Sampada uh, to, to join us with, with her thoughts on this? Yeah, um, uh, so having worked with farmers for all these years, uh, videos from other parts of the world or even from other parts of India in other languages or maybe translated could be a good start point or you know something that could trigger interest of farmers. Uh, okay, so this novel thing is happening among the farming community somewhere else. But then to sustain that interest, you know, everybody is interested to know whether farmers in this locality are doing something of this sort or not, because they always have this, this view that, okay, you know, there would be different set of conditions in that part of the world or in, uh, but here, you know, this is not possible. See, I'm coming from uh, Uttar Pradesh, a, a state which is losing interest in agriculture, unlike Andhra Pradesh, unlike Kerala, Tamil Nadu, where people are exploring more and more youth from uh, middle class, is going back to their roots and exploring new ways of agriculture, this part is yet to see the progress. So I would say from my experience that no matter what you say, you have to show them that this works here. So that is why I insist that, you know, you need to have in India, understanding the culture, you need to have more uh, local language videos to impress upon farmers that, you know, progressive farming can be done. Otherwise, they would definitely appreciate efforts of other farmers, but the story might end there itself. And I guess there's also using the knowledge of the farmers who will see something and they will decide, do I copy 20%, 30% or 50% of what I've just seen? Um, I think there were many things that were being brought up by Dr. Chandra from Manage about all the different players who are interested, whether it be civil servants, the media, with the media houses, we do have contracts in uh, for the radio stations and for the television stations so that they can share the information about which videos are useful and we can try and build up based upon that demand. I don't know if some of the other speakers who spoke earlier would like to join. Dr. Uh, Ranglachmi, um, we had a problem with your sound earlier, uh, but MSRF has been doing an awful lot with women groups, with the village knowledge centers using the videos. Can you see this increasing over the forthcoming uh, months together? Dr. Reng Lakshmi? Okay, maybe, maybe the, the, the sound isn't there. Sorry, yes, please. Yes. Yes, yeah, it is increasing. Now, I mean, uh, the virtual knowledge center concept is also coming up now. So as Part of it, uh, more number of farmers are joining uh, in the learning process. Uh, right now, we are expanding our programs in Assam and Orissa also, where we introduced uh, this video-based learning as a kind of an important uh, learning tool among the communities, where uh, the opportunities to use other digital tools are very limited. So in that context, uh, this video-based learning is a kind of a uh, good opportunity to reach more number of marginalized farmers, especially women in the village. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Paul, just one final question for you before we uh, wrap up and uh, give our thanks to, to everybody. Um, how does this model work? Because these videos are being made, people are being trained, people are doing the translations, and sometimes people watch for free, sometimes people will pay. How can we make sure that this continues so that India is proud to share knowledge on a farmer to farmer basis? Okay, thank you, Phil. Well, I, I think I think it's it's important that we jointly also explore um, ways and 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 funding opportunities for long term engagement with with uh, with India, with the government and with the grassroots organizations. Because, well, the experiences, as we have heard, um, the experiences on on traditional knowledge, but also natural farming, which is not, it's it's not the same as traditional knowledge. It's it's really modern science that comes into the play. Um, it's it's really important that we try to capture as many of those experiences as possible. Because, while well, I'm also pleased to see that um, organizations across 
Africa, like the Alliance for Food Security in Africa or AFSA. They're also very keen to learn from experiences from India. I think India is a leading example in the world on, on organic and natural farming. And if we can work with more organizations in more different states to translate videos, to produce new content, I think that would be really magnificent. Great. Thank you to everybody. And uh, most importantly, a very, very big thank you to Maria for keeping everything moving. And uh, I'll hand back to you now. Thank you so much, Phil, and everybody else for sharing that quick, brief Q&A and answering all the qu questions. Uh, I think with this, uh, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, thank you all for coming in, spending your time and giving us extra 20 minutes. Thank you so much. Uh, please remember that you can get all the Access Agriculture videos in accessagriculture.org it is uh, we'll be putting it in the chat box as well or you can do a simple google search as well that also works uh, also for eco ag tube please check out check out ecoagtube.org uh, we will share all the presentations recording of this workshop and a note subsequently in the next few days for all of your reference and uh, I would now like to invite the executive director uh, of Access Agriculture, Josephine Rogers, to share a vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Ria. Wow, what an amazing variety of ways people have been using Access Agriculture videos in India. And a very big thank you to all of you who've taken part today. As the inspirational speakers, all the government officials, NGOs, knowledge partners, donor agencies and media representatives who followed this workshop with keen interest. Thank you so much for sparing your precious time and we will continue to count on your support. Thank you also to those of you who've asked questions or joined in on the chat in Zoom, on YouTube and on Facebook Live from around the world. It really is lovely to, to have you here. Um, many thanks also to the team who've helped prepare for this webinar from the National Coalition for Natural Farming, from Manage and Access Agriculture and RIA also for guiding us all through it. And of course, to all of you who have shared your experiences in any way. You have given us ideas and inspiration for moving forward. So it really has been important. So our task now is to build on this to find ways of working together, as we're doing in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, amongst other states, to see how we can have more videos in relevant Indian languages and support a quality learning experience for farmers and other members of society to help them transition towards a healthy, sustainable food system. As Access Agriculture, we are committed to working with women's groups and young people so that, in those, so that those in rural areas can have a means of providing for their families, but by working with nature, not against it. So thank you very much, Tanyavad, I think. <laughs> and I wish you a very good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.